So we have a monster, demon, enemy kind of thing. I overhauled the camera system a little bit off screen, so now we have some more free range movement. Uh, and in order to upgrade the camera system further with a lock-on system, which is what's up next for my plans, we're going to need to have more than one enemy. And for that, we're going to need enemy spawners. So let's make those. I've already made myself uh, the script, so let's open that up. And I've done a little bit of uh, messing about and researching before I started recording this video. Uh, because I wasn't actually sure how I was going to go about doing this. Because what we're going to need is we're going to need a system where I have a variable list of lists. So I have a list of five waves. And all of those five waves are going to have a certain amount of game objects in them. I spent about half an hour fucking about thinking about different solutions to this problem. And uh, googling around a little bit. And the way we are going to do that is we're going to make a custom class within this script that way so we can just make that the public class wave content and within this we just make some serialized fields and we'll call those uh monsters which is going to be a list then at the top of the actual script class we can make a serialized field wave content list and now we have a list of a list monster spawner is the name though um it's a game objects list anyway so now we have a list of a list uh we call this waves and if we go back into the editor you'll be able to see hopefully i made a mistake we don't actually need this to be serialized field we need the entire class to be system serializable First time I'm working with like this type of custom classes, so do give me a break. And now we have a drop down menu here that says waves, which is an empty list, but we're going to add an element to that. Turns out this did need to be system serializable after all, which makes sense. And this element zero then has some glitchiness here going on. This is a bug which is on its track apparently to being fixed, is what the article I saw. That was posted a long time ago on the internet said still not fixed apparently uh, but there's a workaround for it which actually um is kind of neat because if we go back into the script and this is uh, going to be a non-reorderable serialized field which is kind of nice that you can specify that to begin with uh but that also fixes the visual glitchiness here so now we can say uh how many waves do we want to have the size of that is going to be five waves which makes five elements and then every single one of these elements has a monster spawner within it, which has, the first one has like say three elements within it. So we've got three monsters here. And then let's say the second wave has five monsters in it. So we can specify five monsters here. Then we're just going to instantiate these depending on which turn it is at a random location in a range around the original spawn point. And that should be everything there is to the monster spawner. This should be very straightforward, which after the last couple of videos, it's very nice to have something straightforward that'll just work. Now in my luck, something's gonna go horribly wrong. So let's make a uh, void spawn wave function. And we're also going to make a integer current wave, which by default will be set to zero. Anyway, so if we uh, put a public get monster spawn spawn list public void get monster spawn list actually public void public game object monster spawn list yeah and can we say that's an array we return i hope we can okay so now we've made a function that literally just says hey this thing up here we're going to get that this is the most basic class that we could ever make what we have here is we have a list of these classes which contains a list of these monsters so what we can do now is we can start a for loop with waves and the number is going to be our current wave and then we can get monster spawn list and there we can get the length so we have a for loop that checks the current wave 
class and then gets the length of that monster spawn list. So that should work. And then we simply just instantiate and then we need a transform. So let's create that transform up here. So transform, just call it spawn trans, float x location and a float for z location. And that should just be random range. Probably make that a variable as well. So uh, float spawn range. That's by default set it equal to like 10. So that is in a range of minus spawn range to positive spawn range. And then we add to that our current transform position X. Copy that over for the Z location. I don't know how that became X. Um, and that becomes the Z location, right? We also need a Y location for it to spawn, obviously, which is going to be a bit more tricky to do. So for the time being, we're just going to make that equal to transform position Y. We're going to probably make that user raycast at some point to check whether or not, like at what value that should happen. So that we don't spawn it in midair and then have it fall down because that will look a little weird. For the time being, I'm okay with that looking a little weird, honestly. And let's actually put that in a separate function, which will return a transform. Actually, that will just return a vector three. So we can copy all that over to there. The reason we do that is uh, we, unlike what we did before, with some of these things where we just like if we checked for a raycast and we couldn't like spawn there or go there or whatever we just do the same thing again the next frame like with the ai navigation can't really do that here due to the for loop because that would mean that if we can't spawn something it just doesn't spawn so i need to make sure that i can spawn something in that location before moving on to the next thing so we go uh physics raycast and we set the spawn trends first to uh its position just the position new vector three to xyz location and for the max distance we can just first we check for which direction though which is going to be vector three down at a distance of five so if we hit something then we return our new spawn transform position do we really need that to be a transform though? <laughs> because at the moment we're only really using the... We can just make this a vector 3. The rotation really doesn't matter too much. And to reflect that, let's call it spawn position instead. Much less complicated. And else we will spawn location here. It's going to complain there because it... Uh, oh, but we can just return that. Yeah, no. So this is kind of cyclical, which could cause problems if you just put a spawner in the middle of a void uh, because this is going to go in an infinite loop but right now it's trying to find the spawn location if it can find one that's suitable it'll just return that xyz location for this function if that raycast fails it will return this same function which will then do the same thing again until the raycast succeeds so that we can put in there now in theory and then we can just put a quaternion ad identity which we probably should also give them a random rotation but for the time being i'm not gonna bother with that and that should really be all there is to it for now Th this should at least spawn our first wave which is a huge thing so at game start we're going to spawn wave so when we start the game, and let's see, we probably want to have this thing be somewhat visible. I think this should be fine. We'll delete this guy. No, we're not going to delete that guy yet because we're going to make a prefab out of him first. That was almost a huge mistake. So we're going to delete that guy. And then in this spawner, uh, we're going to say we're going to spawn three. And then we're going to spawn three of this guy. So now when the game starts, we should see three enemies showing up. Hopefully. We do not. And that is because I'm filling out the wrong fucking list. <laughs> I 
Okay, it works. It spawns in three enemies. That's actually fantastic. That's... That is seriously amazing. Uh, let's make another... We'll call this one... Bobluck. Int. Enemies. Killed. This way, we can use... Um, this little bit. And we can compare that to... Enemies killed. So if... Enemies killed is greater than or equal to this. We set enemies killed back to being zero. We increment current wave and we spawn wave. We could also make a list of like the current wave and have enemies remove themselves from that list when they die. We could do that. I'm thinking, is there any reason to do that? Think not, but I'm gonna do it anyway so we're going to make a public game object array instead and we're going to call that current wave and when we spawn wave we say current wave do we have a clear for that i'm reusing variable names <laughs> so that doesn't help so can i just say current monster clear no empty something like that there must be a way to just set it to well, actually, we don't need to set this to being zero, I realize, because this is only going to trigger when this is zero anyway, so that really doesn't matter. So we can just add current monsters. Oh, hold on, those are arrays, not lists. Um, this should be a public game object list. So how do we do that again? Public list, and I think within these we specify the game objects. That's how we do it. Which now we should also have the clear. That's what I was looking for. I don't need it, but that was that probably should have tipped me off, to be honest. So we can add the new spawn to it. And then we can get rid of this because our current monster dot length dot count because arrays and lists don't use the same fucking words. That's amazing, isn't it? Uh, if that's equal to zero. And then we can make an enemy monster equals to new spawn get component enemy which we could build in a check whether or not it has an enemy component but it's always going to so let's just why not for the first time in a while we're going to go back to the enemy here and we're going to add a new monster spawner we'll just call it spawner then in all this bullshit we're going to make a function to set that this clause is starting to quite grow into something big isn't it public void set spawner we'll get a monster spawner as a parameter let's make that very clear that those are different and then we can say monster set spawner this which can then be followed by in kill enemy before we destroy the game object we want to um go back here and say in our spawner current monster remove this and that should remove uh this game object which should then before killing the enemy remove it from the monster spawner but maybe not everything is going to have a spawner attached to it so we'll actually put in an if statement to check there so if uh spawner does not equal null actually we don't need those brackets in there we can just do that that should be all there is to it. That, that should be a functioning monster spawner now. So let's set the second wave here to have two enemies in it. And of course, we're going to have to make that more fancy at some point down the line. But for now, I just need it to function so that I can program something uh, to have like a lock on system with. And actually, we're going to only spawn in one here. And then to put everything properly to the test we're going to have one two three how about that that sounds about nice so let's pray this works okay we're starting with one enemy manageable right we can deal with one enemy i've dealt with this one specific enemy a billion times the moment it dies it's probably best to have a timer on that because this it's a little overkill um two more spawn in place having a very very hydra like uh setup there these fuckers are taking a while to kill. And then it spawns in a wave of three. My wave spawner is finished. Fucking works without too much trouble. I'm so happy. 